We're going to speak right now to three families of hostages held by Hamas for now 109 days. Uh, joining me right now are Eli Albach. Uh, his 18-year-old daughter, Liria, was kidnapped by Hamas from near the Israeli border with Gaza on October the 7th. Ziv Abud, her boyfriend, uh, Elia um, Cohen, was kidnapped uh, by terrorists at the Nova uh, Festival on October the 7th. And Liran Berman, whose brothers, twins, Ziv and Gali, were taken to Gaza by Hamas from their home in Kfar Aza in southern Israel. Thank you all very much for joining us. I wish it was under happier circumstances, but we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. But you are all in London to basically to, to meet you with. You've met with the Foreign Secretary, David Cameron. You're here to meet with other MPs, other people who are influential in a bid to, well, get your loved ones home. Um, who have you, who else have you met? And what are you hearing from the government? And, 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 and what are they, what do you want them to do? Um, we, we discussed with the Prime Minister and with David uh, Cameron, and uh, we request them um, to keep uh, pushing um, Hamas to, to stop this situation and to push Qatar, because Qatar is the only country that can uh, talk with Hamas because they invest billions of billions of dollars there. So they must to listen to them. If Hamas want to listen, he will listen to the Qatar. Qatar is the uh, money suppliers to the Hamas to help them. Uh, so they do but they all are the, They of... are going to be the absolute key. And, and, and Liran, this is the key thing, isn't it? Because Qatar gets a lot of praise for bro you know, brokering those deals to let... Uh, for, to, to encourage Hamas to free other hostages in exchange for uh, prisoners held in Israeli jails. Um, but they don't seem to be getting enough pressure on the world stage for harbouring known terrorists in the Hamas organisation, the terrorist group, and other terrorist groups, and not putting pressure on them to do the right thing. People say they want peace. If you want peace in Gaza, that's got to start with the hostages, your family members, your loved ones, being released by the Hamas terrorists, surely? Of course. We don't want this conflict uh, at all. Uh, on October 6th, there was a ceasefire. All the people who calling for a ceasefire, on October 6th, there was a ceasefire. And then Hamas entered our, our country. He butchered our people. He beheaded babies. He burned people alive. He took civilians as hostages and is hosting them in tunnels. And if the world want this conflict to end, then the hostages need to be released. This is the first priority. Yep. Then everything will be much easier to end the conflict. Indeed. Before the hostages are released, we, we can't go on with our lives. And like Eli said, we know that Qatar is the, the key player to, yeah. to release the hostages and to end the conflict. So like Eli said, we met a, a, a Prime Minister uh, Rishi, and we met uh, David Cameron and we urged them to, to keep the pressure on Qatar. Yeah, that's the crucial thing. Now, for our viewers, they'll be able to see you're sitting there with pictures on your, on your clothes or, or holding a sign in the case of early, or, of your loved ones. Tell us a little bit about, about them. Um, let's come to you, Ziv. It's your boyfriend, Elia, who was kidnapped from the Nova party. We saw, I mean, it was just a mass slaughter at that music festival, young people having a wonderful time. Uh, we saw people slaughtered. It was a horrific massacre. A huge number of young people killed, raped, mutilated, and taken hostage. W what do you know of where your boyfriend is, what has happened to him, and, and, and even whether he's still alive? Uh, actually, I know a lot because I was with Helia. Uh, in the party. Uh, also, my nephew was murdered uh, in this party. He was uh, 19 years old. So sorry. He was a child. A lot of child murder in this situation on October 7. So they come to our house, to a music festival, to the kibbutzim, to the houses, and murder, burn, rape, a lot of people. And this is what the world need to know. Because we are the first step, but Europe, you are the next step. 
<laughs> we have borders. You don't have borders. Yeah, indeed. That's what I this is this is something I try and make very clear to people on my show. But but on the specifics with your your boyfriend, he you, you're a young couple. Um, you've been together though since didn't you meet at, in your early teens at school? Yes, we 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 are together for seven years, yeah. and uh, it, Elia is very is very 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 happy person. Mm -hmm. And now uh, you know they took uh, our life. And do you know and where? Are... Do you know anything about his condition since he has been taken by Hamas? Have you? Because we've obviously had hostage releases, and we know some information has come out. But in your specific with with Elia, do you know anything about him? Was he still alive? No. Has he been seen by by any of the no, other the, hostages the released? No, the only thing that we have is photo from uh, from this Saturday and a video that we uh, we get two weeks later from this Saturday that he is alive. They they kidnapped him from the shelter that we was. Uh, we have the video. I know that he was injured uh, in his leg, and until then we don't uh, know nothing. We get we get a sunlight uh, after one month, and. From then, we don't know nothing about Elia, not from the release also. Mm -hmm. I, mean, that must, I can't imagine what that is like. Um, Liran, to come back to you, um, your twin brother, your brother's twins, Ziv and Gali, were taken um, from their home in southern Israel. Do you have any information about the conditions they're being held in and, what, uh, and, and, and their health, or indeed whether they're still alive? Um, we knew, we know that uh, from the release sausages that they saw them separately. Uh, each, uh, they were both alive, each with minor injuries. Um, but for 56 days now, we have no new information. Uh, the, released, uh, the released families saw them uh, separately for a brief time, uh, but now we started counting again. Uh, we have no new information since then, 56 days now. Yeah, I can't, I can't imagine what that must be like for you all to, to have just no idea and the days passing like this. Um, Ellie, let me come to you. Um, your 18-year-old daughter was kidnapped um, near the Israeli border. We, the awful thing about this, and I know you've spoken about this before, the, 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 some of the most awful crimes, I mean, murder, the I mean, horrific uh, torture and things that went on. But we also know there has been mass sexual assault, mass rape committed on, on women taken by Hamas or even before they were killed in, in the Israeli territory. And you, your, some of your concerns are about the conditions that your daughter is being held in and what is happening to her, aren't they? We know... Um from a hostage that released that they was with Leary. And we know that she is alive. Yeah. Uh, without uh, water, food, she didn't take showers. But the most important issue, it's very difficult to me to talk, but uh, they say that uh, they touched the girls. And uh, we are worried. And the uh, time is... Uh, knocking each second, you know, it's past three months. Yeah. And uh, we are worried why they didn't uh, release them in the first stage because they was releasing all the women except the girls from 18 till 30, they didn't release. And we are uh, worried that something happened there in sexual issues, so they didn't release them. Yeah. And we know that some of the women who have been released, there have been suggestions that there has been abuse, but, but there's also been suggestions that those who have been released have not spoken publicly because they don't want to add to the horror that families like you are going through. But, yes. you know, I'm a, I'm a mother of a 17-year-old, you're a father of an 18-year-old. I know where my daughter is right now and I know she's safe. I can't imagine what it could be like for a parent to not know yes. where their child is and what conditions they're held in other than their, if they're alive, that they're in a tunnel far under the ground without adequate food, water, med medicine, with people who have committed such heinous crimes. I, I, do, I mean, do any of you, do any of you, have any of you had a, had a night's sleep since October the 7th? 
Uh, we don't sleep 108, 109 days. We take a lot of uh, medicines. Uh, we have a psychologue with us, with all the family. We didn't go to work. Uh, my other children don't go to school. Um, all the family is broken. All the big family cannot work. You know, we don't have a life and we are running all over the world to speak with all the leaderships yeah. in the countries. Uh, and is that to... the fear, Ziv, that, that, that actually the hostages are being forgotten? Look, I think people are rightly concerned about uh, children, particularly uh, the civilians in Gaza, the Palestinians who are getting caught up in this, having to leave their homes and being bombed, who've got no part in what Hamas did on that day. And people are co rightly concerned about that. But are you concerned that, that in all of this, People are forgetting about your family members, your loved ones, who are still being held by this terrorist group underground in God knows how horrific conditions. Is that the concern? Yes, this is the, this is what we are doing, that nobody will forget them. Yep. And we will keep pushing in all the media, all over the Israel and all over the world, mm -hmm. as much as we can, that uh, we will not... Uh, uh, stop to uh, stop to demonstration to stop to talk till our uh, hostages will be back Indeed. And Ziv, as soon as possible and Ziv, is, are you hopeful that you are you've got some something tangible from your meetings with the British Prime Minister and Foreign Secretary this week um, no one didn't Liran, do you can want you to answer that? Can you, repeat, can you repeat the question, please? Oh, are, you, are, you, are you hopeful that you've got something practical, real, and, uh, some uh, real offer of help from our Prime Minister, our Foreign Secretary? Yes. Yes, we trust them. Yeah, we know that uh, it can be uh, change the game. Uh, we want to trust them, yeah. really. Uh, when we, we need a lot of pressure, really. That's, that's what we need. Yeah. We need the help because we can't do it alone. Uh, we need to remember that we don't fight with army. We fight with terror organization. And uh, this is, remember to say, you, you need to remember this. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you very much, all three of you, for joining us under these uh, horrific circumstances. We wish you well. I, I know that everyone here at Talk TV and everyone watching and listening will be hoping that something is done and that your loved ones are returned safe and sound uh, to you um, and, and that you can, you know, sleep at night knowing that they are safe. I really appreciate you joining us. Thank you so much to Ellie, to Ziv and, and, and Liren. Thank yeah. you for joining us here today. Um, Tom Slater, still with me in the studio, editor of Spiked Online. I genuinely, I, I, I think it's always as a mum. You know, I understand losing brothers and, 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 and a boyfriend. For me, the idea that my daughter mm. could be being held by people who know, I mean, the, I know there are people online who are still denying this. The evidence is, there is evidence is so, so widespread now, it's so clear um, that, that, that the Hamas terrorists in their thousands went in and raped and mutilated and tortured, murdered and then took hostages. The thought of, I, my daughter or anyone who's being held by these people is terrifying. And there's been this idea when we have seen hostages released in those exchanges that, well, you know, they, they, they smiled at their captives. Mm. So, you know, so they must have treated them well. More and more interviews, sometimes, um, you know, anonymously, people are saying they believe that actually, you know, it's quite clear that a lot of these people were very badly treated, mm -hmm. uh, very badly tortured, beaten, raped, sexually assaulted. Uh, and people want to protect those families, but mm -hmm. we need to know the reality, don't we? Of course we do, and it's, as you were discussing there, the reality is slipping away. There's people who have tried to deny the atrocities themselves. Hi, Owen themselves. Jones. There have been people who, as you've suggested, have tried to suggest that because when someone is released, you know, still at gunpoint, mm -hmm. effectively, been told to say nice things about their captors that they should take that as read, even when they subsequently yeah, give because, interviews. Because you've also still got a family member there. It, exactly, or they're worried about the rest of the hostages. A lot of these people have tremendous sort of survivor's guilt as a consequence coming out of this situation. What we got uh, insight into there was the fact that the taking of these hostages is not some trifling matter. It's torture for the people who have been taken hostage, you know, kept underground, 
their physical condition deteriorating, all sorts of horrendous things could be taking place. And even we've even heard reports of them toying with them, saying, oh, you're going today, and then not, you know, not even knowing what day it is, not knowing when this is going to end. Not seeing daylight for 109 days. Precisely, and uh, therefore some of the people who have made it back thought they were there for a year, thought they were there for this amount of time, tells you about the kind of psychological torture which is going on amongst the physical stuff, but also the torture that it inflicts on the families who are also kept in the most horrendous sort of limbo. So for that partic- for those atrocities and for those ongoing atrocities to slip from people's memories and worse for people to downplay them, yeah. to suggest they're actually being quite kind to them, to suggest that there's some sort of moral equivalence between these hostages and the people who are imprisoned in Israel yeah. because they threw petrol bombs at soldiers is grotesque, but it's something we've... That, that is the word. But also, you know, if you really want peace for the people of Palestine and, and for civilian you know, and, and children in particular to, to be safe, which surely we all would want, mm. any right-thinking person should want, the first thing you should be on the streets marching for on a Saturday um, is, is, very clear, is for Hamas to release the hostages, mm-hmm. for Hamas to lay down their arms. Not, not for Israel to stop bombing, but for Hamas to do that. And they go, oh, the last 75... Yeah, yeah, the last 75 years. But in the, the day, Israel wasn't bombing Gaza. Mm-hmm. Um, that wasn't happening on, on October the 6th for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, I do find it extraordinary. I mean, again, I think Douglas Murray really nailed it in the very few days after, after this attack. When he said, you know, sometimes you're at night and a flare goes up and you mm-hmm. can see where everyone's standing and we can. Uh, we will always stand with those people. And that doesn't mean, I always stand with these families. It doesn't mean that I don't care desperately about the lives of those who are being killed right now uh, as a result mm-hmm. of of Israeli rockets, but those rockets would stop and would not have started if it weren't for um, the the attacks by Hamas. I mean, Hamas is the problem here, not Mm -hmm. Israel.